What's the best 3D printer to buy? The answer is actually more complicated than you might think. If you've been into 3D printing for a while, chances are you've had the question posed to you. Somebody has asked you what 3D printer they should buy. If you're just getting into 3D printing, chances are you've posed that question to somebody else. What seems like a simple question on the surface is actually way more complicated than you might think. There's so many different factors to consider before buying one and everybody's use case is different. And while many 3D printing kits have gotten so cheap that it's possible to buy one on a whim, buying the wrong 3D printer could leave a bad taste in your mouth and you may not want to use 3D printing in the future. The first, and perhaps most important, is your budget. It's easy to say that, oh, I want the cheapest one, or for some people to say money is no object, but neither of these is going to deliver optimum results. The cheapest 3D printer is rarely the one to go with, see the Tico or the 101 Hero, but even the most expensive 3D printer doesn't guarantee it's going to be the best. And also keep in mind, there is no silver bullet, there's no 3D printer that does absolutely everything, which is why for most people, their first 3D printer won't be their last. With your budget established, then it's time to decide which route you want to go. If you're a comfortable DIYer, then a 3D printing kit may be in the cards. You learn your 3D printer very, very well by putting it together, and fixing it in the future won't be any trouble. With kits, you're going to have to plan your time accordingly because a lot of them have dozens to hundreds of parts. Some of them can range from being built in two to three hours, while others can take up to eight hours. So go slow, take your time, be careful not to break anything, and you should be just fine. If you're just fascinated by the technology, but you don't want to get your hands dirty, then buying a pre-assembled kit may be the way to go. With a pre-assembled printer, there's usually minimal work done to get it working out of the box. So something like the Prusa Mark III comes as both a kit or pre-assembled. The kit is $749 US and the pre-assembled is $999, which means that you're paying an extra $250 to get one that's ready to go out of the box. The third option would be, of course, to build one from scratch. While I generally don't recommend this for somebody with zero experience, Tom over at Tom's 3D put together a nice little tutorial where he built a clone of the Prusa Mark II and it turned out really nice. To do something like this, you are going to need access to a 3D printer or a 3D printing service to get the 3D printed parts. Some printers straddle the line between kit and ready to go. The CR10 arrives in a state that many people are calling 90% pre-assembled. That means that all you have to do is take out the bottom and the top, screw them together, connect the labeled wires to the control box, then connect your Bowden tube and you're pretty much ready to level the bed and get printing. Now it's time to figure out what you need to use on your 3D printer. PLA is usually where people start. It's easy to print with, it doesn't warp easily, and it doesn't require a heated bed. The downside to PLA, however, is that its glass temperature starts at around 60 degrees, which means that starting at 60 degrees, your part's going to start to lose its cohesion. This means that leaving a part in a hot car can actually cause it to warp. Many cosplayers have found this out the hard way. But if these limitations are acceptable to you, then pretty much any FDM printer is going to meet your requirements. If you want to move into more robust filaments, such as ABS or PTG, then a heated bed becomes more of a necessity, and that's something you're going to have to factor in as you look at your options. Beyond that, if you're looking at more exotic filaments, then you're going to have to consider something with an all-metal hot end. A non-all hot metal hot end can only heat up to about 250 degrees before the Teflon liner inside it starts to break down. An all metal hot end can actually go way hotter than that and can handle most filaments. From here, it's time to think about the size of your printer. Printers can range anywhere from 110 millimeters in all axes, all the way up to 500 millimeters in all axes and even larger. The most common size has classically been about 200 millimeters in all directions with a little bit of variation from kit to kit. Recently, however, larger format printers have become more popular, most notably the CR10, which has become particularly popular with cosplayers. So that covers the basics of purchasing a 3D printer, and it would be enough to make an informed decision, but we're not done yet. You see, all sorts of extra features have been popping up over the past couple of years that you're going to want to know about before you purchase a 3D printer. There are quite a few printers now that offer multi-extrusion or multi-material printing. They can range anywhere from a dual head hot end where you have two hot ends and two extruders that are spaced a distance apart and you calibrate that in software. This allows you to print either two colors or two materials at the same time. There's also the type of multi-extruder that's included in something like the Prusa Mark III multi-extruder add-on. 
This allows you to put in one through four types of material and have them all come out of the same hot end. The printer is able to retract one color of filament, then purge out the extra filament into a purge block and start printing with the new color. Keep in mind that not all materials are compatible with each other, so your mileage may vary, and this usually works better if all of the materials you're printing with require the same temperature. There's also different types of linear motion that you have to consider when you're buying your 3D printer. Printers like the Mark III use the typical I3 motion where the X moves side to side, the Z moves up and down, and the print bed acts as your Y axis moving back and forth. This works out pretty well, but it does mean that your print is always in motion, which can lead to slightly degraded prints. Don't get me wrong, the Mark III delivers absolutely fantastic prints, but if you're looking at clones of it, you do have to consider this. Also keep in mind that some printers that aren't built as sturdy begin to get a little bit of wobble once the Z-axis is up near the top and the X-axis is moving back and forth. This can lead to a degrade print quality up near the top. Delta printers are a really neat choice. They are usually pretty quick, they look awesome when they're printing, and they work by having three motors working in unison. So by having one motor go up and one motor go down, you can have the print head move in a predefined circle, and then by having all the motors move up just a little bit, then you get your Z-axis. So they have the potential to be very fast and very accurate, but they can be a bit of a nightmare to configure. Printers like the Ultimaker use a setup where the hot end is stuck up at the top and the bed slowly lowers away. This means that the print is not in motion and the head is very, very light, which makes it able to print very fast and very accurately. This setup is, however, locked to a Bowden style extruder, which means that you may not be able to use all materials and some materials may not print that nicely on it. Also consider where you're going to be purchasing your printer. Most kits that you order from China are going to take anywhere from a week to a month to arrive. But also keep in mind, if you're buying a 3D printer from a more reputable source, that it may take longer for it to come in. You may be able to get it shipped to you in two days, but a lot of them have lead time, so always check with the manufacturer's website to make sure that you can have it shipped immediately. There are literally dozens of ways of, to buy a 3D printer online. You can go direct to the manufacturer, you can go to Amazon, Gearbest, AliExpress. Printers keep popping up on Kickstarter, but if you're going to back something on Kickstarter, you have to be cautious. You're not buying a 3D printer if you back it on Kickstarter. You're telling the creator of that Kickstarter campaign that you believe in them and their idea, and you're willing to put your money where your mouth is. If the project fails, you're going to be left with no money and no 3D printer. Even if the project does complete successfully, you're not guaranteed to get what you were hoping for. Most of these projects start off with, we promise you everything for practically nothing, and most aren't delivered without at least some concessions being made. Plenty of people have gotten printers that of course couldn't be tested ahead of time because they paid for them before they were a reality, and the actual quality of the prints off them has been lackluster at best. You really have to treat it like the stock market or lending money to a friend. Only put up what you're really willing to lose. So now it's time to summarize your notes and go through and see what meets up with the criteria. If you're comfortable with tinkering, then you may be able to make some concessions. Many 3D printers are upgradable for stuff like the hot end after you purchase them, which means that you can buy something that meets your needs now, but know that it's also going to meet your needs later. Once you have your list and you know which printers meet the criteria, it's time to start watching reviews. And never stop with just one review. Every reviewer is going to have a different view on each printer, and you really want to make a purchase having the full big picture in mind. If all else fails, it's time to ask questions. Toss up comments on videos, put up tweets on Twitter. If the printer you're looking at has a Facebook group, join it and see if you can ask questions to people that already have the printer. In this always connected type of society, Facebook and other groups like this can actually be your friend for making such a big decision. With the proper questions and a little bit of research, your purchasing of a 3D printer can be a very positive thing. Once you've decided which one you're gonna buy, see if there is a full community developed around the one that you want. In many cases, you can get an already tuned profile for your slicer of choice from a community that's already done all the legwork for you. I was really surprised by putting in the Kira profile for the CR10 how much better the prints got with very little effort put in. When you've got a large community behind stuff, they've already figured out how to do things and that's great for you. So with all your questions answered, it's finally time to make a decision. So here's a sample list. For large prints and support for lots of material, but relatively small feature set and a mid-range cost, something like the CR10 makes a lot of sense. If you like upgradability and innovation with a lot of features and support for most materials, as well as a pretty rounded out-of-the-box experience, something like the Prusa Mark III is probably going to do it for you. For fast, tall prints, Delta printers reign supreme. The Tiva Little Monster has gained a lot of popularity with a decent out-of-the-box experience, as well as plenty of guides to get nearly perfect prints off of it. 
if speed, reliability, and clean prints are what you're after, but at the cost of upgradability and a higher out-of-the-box cost, then it's hard to go wrong with an Ultimaker printer. For the true DIYer, there are literally dozens of kits available. Most have quirks, but most can also be tuned to deliver truly awesome results. Finally, if you're looking for a printer that makes a great table lamp, but not a great printer, then Tico's got you covered. I spent months researching which 3D printer I should get. I looked at all the different options from the cheapest kits I could find to stuff like the Ultimaker. Ultimately, I settled on the printer bought Simple Metal. The reasons were pretty simple. I wasn't that concerned with bed size at that point. I wanted something that could print in multiple materials and it had a heated bed. And I also wanted something that was a bit portable. It also came pre-configured and ready to go out of the box. And this is probably the only thing I would have changed. You see, I was intimidated by the number of parts and actually putting together a kit and that it wasn't for novice, so I ordered a pre-assembled one. Well, it wasn't long before I decided to upgrade the X, Y, and Z axis to get a larger print surface, and at that point I realized how much I loved the assembly process and wish that I could go back in time and buy the kit instead. These days my printer bought Simple Metal is a bit of a mess and in desperate need of a full maintenance, but I still love it and I still use it regularly. Well, that's it for this guide. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything or if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. And until the next one, stay creative.